But what I really think the real battle is, is, is the battle for confidence to try and get the confidence in the markets back um, from them incredibly and stupidly giving it away last year. I mean, this didn't, didn't last very long. So, and that's really the danger is that the markets have been fighting the Federal Reserve. But we are just now starting to experience the lag effects of those rapid rate rises that came in 2022 and the beginning of 2023. So we haven't really felt yet the full impact. And then you have Janet Yellen coming out and saying there's not going to be a recession. Right. <laughs> but look at the yield curve. So the yield curve, the greatest indicator of a recession is basically saying absolutely recession is coming. Yet she comes out saying, despite the lag in China, that's not going to spill over in the U.S. What, what, do you, what do you do with this info? Well, first of all, like my father always used to say, watch what they do and not what they say. Because it's in what they do that you can find the truth. And with global central banks buying and accumulating a massive amount of gold, more than they have since the last time we transitioned, probably more than that now, since the last time we transitioned in the 60s, and repatriating their gold, what does that tell me? That tells me the end is very, very near. Wow. Well, I always say, like, would you agree that right now, it feels calm. Mm -hmm. It feels quiet. The eye of the storm. Right? We know this is not gonna. <laughs> we know this is not gonna last long. And and I guess I want to bring up the next point about the the bank runs. Right? We stopped almost talking about it. I'm not saying me and you, right. but uh, as a whole, right? And actually, the Wall Street Journal had a good um, article. You know, is the banking crisis over? And they point to um, three concerns: one, deposit costs, high interest rates, have forced many banks to pay more to retain deposits, bond losses. Rising interest rates depress the value of low rate securities and loans and commercial real estate loans. Banks are anticipating losses in their commercial real estate portfolios. Yeah. So what's your take on the banks? How closely are you watching them? And um, should we be sighing, breathing a sigh of relief? No, no, no. Because the, the issues that plague the banks that failed are still prevalent throughout the entire global banking system. Because again, I mean, it's not rocket science, but when they raise interest rates, principal values go down, whether or not they admit it. So no, this banking crisis isn't even marginally over. I think it was Western Alliance that did manage to survive um, what happened in March, but their deposit costs, uh, if I remember this correctly, increased, was it 25%? because uh, because they're trying to attract deposits back into the system. And that's the other piece that people usually overlook. They'll look for the highest yield, but what they miss is that with the higher the yield is in, in uh, difference to the rest of the market, the more risk you're actually taking. So the regional banks are being forced to pay a whole lot more. Actually, all the banks are forced to pay a whole lot more. Um, I want to point to the stress tests, though, because that's garbage, mm -hmm. garbage, 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 garbage. <laughs> and I'm telling you. Absolutely. They said it when they came out with them after the crisis. You did. That it's just about public confidence in the banks. And then what were the banks, the big banks, allowed to do? Well, spend an awful lot on dividends and buybacks and all of this stuff. And now what are we also doing is we're watching all of these big banks go into the market to raise a lot of capital. And, and I'm sure you're seeing this as well at ITM. When I speak to my bullion dealer friends, and I mentioned this in another interview as well, that they're noticing that very high net worth individuals uh, you know, with money nor way north of $200,000 in the banks are you know, maybe never thought of precious metals but all of a sudden are not feeling safe in the system and are looking um, to gold as a solution. Right, exactly. And, and we are definitely seeing that because they're starting to understand that 
No, the, the, this banking crisis is not over. Maybe they've been able to paper over it and so everybody is calm and you have consumer confidence going up and all of this other kind of garbage, but it's built on a house of lies. And that's what Yellen's job is and that's what Powell's job is. That's what all the central banks, all the faces, their job is to keep the public calm and keep them inside of the yeah. system because it is easier yeah. to steal wealth that way. Right? It's so obvious if you just start piecing the, the puzzles to get, puzzle pieces together. I guess, Lynette, I guess as a final thought, what do you say to folks who are looking at the price of you know, precious metals right now? There's not a lot of excitement in the gold space right now, and maybe they're on the sidelines waiting. I'm saying, what are you waiting for? Central banks themselves <laughs> are not waiting, right? and they have the ability to manipulate that, I'm saying you take advantage of it and get everything in place because we are inside of a major hurricane. There's no doubt about it. It isn't just the death of the dollar, it's the death of the entire financial, monetary, and social system. And that's huge. And they need as many people as possible to keep their wealth in there because when we go to those CBDCs, you will have no choice if that is your only form of money. And they have said they can keep their finger on that button 24-7, which means they can also cut you off. I mean, I mean, it really is simple. You got to have this and it's got to be outside of the system. It's real money. Central bankers know it. You need to know it too. People need to know it too. Central... You know, just a, just a point on central bank digital currencies. I mean, we have the launch of the Fed now. How closely are you watching that as, as a first step towards central bank digital currencies? Huge. Uh, you know, if you recall, during the, the issues that we were having in, 19, in, 1920, in 2020, they said, how much easier would it be if everybody had an account and we could push a button and just put money in there? So that's what they're setting up for is to absolutely enable pushing the CBDCs onto the population. And they're going to try and keep it as close to normal as possible so that we can accept it and start to use it. And it's not using the money the you know, I mean, it's just what well, they'll do. It's not using the money that they're going to push into it, which will, again, here's the thing, Daniela. And, and nobody, yeah. nobody talks about this, but we have virtually no purchasing power left in the currency. Officially, you got three cents left. And the biggest tool to regulate that are interest rates. And every time the Fed tries to raise interest rates, it creates the next crisis. So why isn't anybody talking about, I mean, what happens when we do get to zero?